good. We are the light of the world, it says in our gospel reading today. And that gospel lesson comes to us in Matthew chapter 5. And that chapter contains words of Jesus that we call the Sermon on the Mount. As Jesus was teaching the disciples there on that mountain, he started out in chapter 5 with talking about something we call the Beatitudes. It's the blesseds. Blessed are those who, blessed are those who do this, who do that, who have this, who have that. In those Beatitudes, there's a common theme. It says, we are blessed because of what he has done. It's not because of what we accomplish, it's because of what Jesus has already done for us. Jesus has forgiven us our sins. He came into this dark world. He chose to bring the light of life in the darkness. And because of that, we are already blessed. And that's what these Beatitudes are about. And they're to remind us that we've already received light. Now, like Mr. Zander was sharing with the kids up here, it's not like we now have a light switch on us. You can turn it on and suddenly our face glows like Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai. That's not what it's like. But we can be filled with a love that can flow to the world. And that love can bring brightness into people's lives. We have Valentine's Day coming up, by the way. If you haven't remembered that, you might want to be warned. It's time to plan ahead, guys, all right? So uh, Valentine's Day coming up. You know, we talk about shining with love and glowing with love. And you see someone who's just all happy and excited, and they're all in love, and they're glowing, we might say. It's not that they're radioactive and they actually literally glow, but they have this delight, this joy that flows out. That's what we are to show to the world, the love of Christ. And it's a love that we fill, are filled with when we come here to church and receive God's gifts. You know, Christmas time, we just celebrated here recently. We had all the lights that were up in here, the big tree and the candles, and that was beautiful and it was bright. But the real light was Jesus, who came to us to come into our brokenness, our hurt, our pain and suffering that darkens our spirits he came to brighten us up with the joy of his love and salvation. And so we were filled with that light of Jesus Christ. And now that light of his love inspires us to go out and live for him in this world and to follow his guidelines on how to live in this world. That's what his law is for. In our readings today, it talks about the law will endure, endure until Jesus comes back, his commands. Those commands are a light for our lives. They're to show us the right way to go. And Mr. Zander was talking about walking in a house, playing games in the house in the dark. It can be dangerous, too, to walk around in the dark without a light on. I know uh, there's been times when Heather has moved things on me. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like change so much. I kind of like my bed to stay in the same place, so I always know where things are when I wake up at night. And there's been a few times when he, she likes change, and she's moved things around. And I say, okay, I'll try this. And I wake up in the night with my head in the same place as it's always been, and I run into the wall. You know, that's not much fun. A light would be handy at those times. That's what God's law does for us in this world. It shows us the way to go so we don't run into the wall of God's law that says, don't go here. Don't do this. It's bad for you. It'll hurt you. The law is there as a good gift from God, a blessed gift. And so it is that light of God's word, his law that stops us from foolishness, his gospel that shows us the way to go that we are filled with and that we can share with the world. That's our purpose now. That's why we're here. If we aren't fulfilling that purpose, we might as well go on and be with the Lord in the everlasting light of heaven where there is no darkness at all. But he said, I've left you here to be a light in a dark world. Go out and shine your light. That's what verses 14 and 16 say in our text today. It says very clearly that you are the light of the world, a light in the darkness. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. Give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So our good works are here not to try to earn heaven, but to show God that we're already on our way to heaven, and to show the world where we're headed, to show them his love. This law is for us to fulfill, as Jesus has done for us completely. We're to do our part to share that light also. 
In Matthew 5, 17 and 19, from our text today, it says, Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. Until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we are to share this law with the world around us. It's kind of like going up to someone and saying, Hey, look out, you're in trouble. And when they're wandering in the darkness and they're headed for a deep deep chasm in front of them, you turn on a light and say, Look out, you're going to fall if you're not careful. That's what we are to do, spiritually speaking. We are to go to people who are walking in the darkness of sin and foolishness of this world and say, Look out, you're in danger. God has said this is coming. Destruction is going to come upon you. And it will come in other ways in this life. The pain and suffering in this world is greater when you turn against God's will. It happens. When we do the foolish things that He has told us not to do, pain and suffering will fall on us. Darkness will get deeper. So we are to be the light that says, Look out. Watch out. It's a loving thing to do. Some people would say, well, you Christians just judgmental and you look down on people and criticize them. Not it. We're not here to condemn or criticize. We're here to constructively guide people in a better way to go, to warn them of the dangers of the dark, and to show them the ways of the light because of love. You know, a lighthouse that shines out its beacon into the darkness as a raging sea is causing problems for the ships out at sea or there's fog, that light is there to bring hope. It's there to say, come this way and be, beware of that way. It's to show the right way to go. We can be that same kind of light, a beacon shining in the night. And the light of a lighthouse that shines like that with a directional beam Some lights are that way specifically with that shining beam. We're to be that way as we point a beam of light to Jesus to show Him as the way of safety, Him as the safe harbor in the storms of life. We are to shine every eye to look to Jesus as our only hope in this dark world. And we can do that as we shine with great efficiency. I uh, speak that word specifically that we are to be efficient in shining the light because God wants us to take what we've received and sp- spread it on, to pass it along and not just keep it to ourselves. Unlike an inefficient light bulb. Now, a lot of light bulbs today are these old incandescent kinds that are uh, not real efficient. You know, we have these bulbs that take a lot of energy and they don't put out as much light. A lot of places are getting rid of those nowadays. You may have noticed here in the hallways, here in the church, and around our building, we've replaced a lot of those old incandescent bulbs. Sam Siegel and his team are doing a great job getting them changed out, saving a lot of cost on electricity. That's great. And giving actually cleaner, brighter light so we can see better in the dark. These old inefficient bulbs, they're not worth too much to be thrown away, gotten rid of. They remind me a lot of what Jesus was talking about in our text when he talks about salt that has lost its saltiness. He says, salt that has lost its saltiness is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Are we like salt that has lost its saltiness? Are we like old incandescent bulbs that aren't very efficient? Do we suck up all of God's energy here at church? We come in and we receive the word. We come to his table and get his holy supper. And, oh, it's great. I feel so good. I'm filled with God's love. Wonderful. And then we just go out and hold it in. We bring all the energy and just hold it to ourselves. And our light barely glows as we go out. We're not living with his love. We may be doing some good things and nice things kind of quietly behind the scenes, but we're not shining as a beacon out there for people to see. He says, get out there. Be like that, that big searchlight that is showing people the way. Shine with efficiency and effectiveness into the world in a bright and beautiful way. Like those bright um, high beams on cars nowadays. I remember when they first started coming out, man, I was thinking, man, those are blinding lights, those new bluish beams that are so bright. And you're driving at night, and it almost blinds you when you come across one of those cars. But they do a good job of showing the way ahead. They can show you dangers that are out there. 
It can pierce the darkness much better than the older lights could. We're to be that kind of bright light. And if it is piercing and harsh to people at first when we share God's word, maybe that's what they need. To wake them up and say, wow, I've been living in the dark. What I'm doing is not right. Where I'm going is in danger. But then to take that light and point them again to Jesus. That's our job. To shine that efficient, powerful light of Christ into the world. As we hear from St. Paul in Ephesians 5, 8, At one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So let that light shine. Show it brightly to the world. And be effective at it. Effective in changing people's lives. It will happen as we share that light. But in order to shine the light, we also need to get rid of those things that distract us from our job. If you're busy looking at other things, you might forget about shining that light. We get burdened with the loads of this life, all the things of this world that consume us. Our own wants and interests and needs. It's like carrying a heavy backpack and trying to keep track of all that stuff that we're trying to manage. And when we're focused on all of our stuff and looking at all our things, we're not very effective at shining out to the world. You know, this week in Bible study, we were talking with uh, our men's group on Wednesday morning. One of the guys said, you know, my Jeep blew up this week, and now I'm really sad because my Jeep that I really love, I won't have it. It's just really bumming me out. But then he contemplated and said, but you know, I, I think it's helping me to realize I was holding on too tightly to my Jeep, and it was too important to me, maybe. And I was more worried about my Jeep than other things I should be focusing on in this world. So even though it hurts, maybe it was for my good, I guess. And that's how we are quite often. We want to hold on to our things, our house, our car, our possessions, our stuff that we so, think is so important. But we're so consumed at trying to manage all that stuff that our light gets sucked in and are focused on those things instead. He says, wake up. Let that stuff go away. That's what was so exciting to see when we were in Ethiopia. We were dealing with men and women who had very little of the stuff of this world. They didn't have a huge pack of things. Most of them came to this conference for two weeks carrying a little tiny bag with maybe one change of clothes. That's what they had. But they're the happiest people I've encountered in this world. The joy of the Lord was so evident in them. And they were so eager to suck in more of God's energy, not so they could just suck it to themselves, but they want to go shine it more. Said, what can I share with the world? i got to shine this light. Give me more. Give me more power. Give me more of God's energy. I want to shine it. Believe me, they are the brightest LED halogens that are out there, whatever they are. They are bright lights shining in the darkness in a profound and powerful way. That's why that church body is growing 9% per year. They're close to 10 million members now, and they expect to be at 20 million in the next decade. And I believe they'll do it because it's about Jesus, not them. It's about Jesus shining his light into the world. They remind me, instead of like this guy here burdened with his pack and looking down... Instead, it reminds me of a runner that I've seen running in the early morning hours with his headlamp on. There's this guy who I know who's been training for a marathon, and I'll see him out like at 4 a.m. with this headlight on. I've been out, time change, uh, jet lag, I've been up at 4 a.m. lately, sorry. But anyway, I'll try not to call you guys when I'm thinking about things at 4 a.m. But uh, when I see this guy out running at 4 a.m. with his headlamp on, I say, that guy is driven, he's dedicated. He's not just dwelling on the ground. He's not looking back. He's looking ahead. And he's got that headlamp to brighten the way and show the way and move forward. Without a pack on his back, without a burden, he's moving ahead. That's how we should be in this life. Looking ahead to the coming of Jesus. To his return to take us to himself. And to shine the way on the path that we need to keep going. And bring others along with us. Come on, there's enough light for all of us. Let's go. Shine that light brightly and powerfully into the world so that we can unite everyone everywhere with Jesus for eternity. That's our purpose here. It's not just to be sucking up the energy and keeping it to ourselves. Otherwise, Jesus could take us home right now. We are here to receive his energy and let it shine to the whole world. Everyone, everywhere. Go out and let your good work shine. Not to just honor yourself 
but to honor the one who's put them into you and to show people the light of Jesus. You know, I mentioned uh, going to Ethiopia and flying over there and back was an adventure. I always love flying, and especially at night. And I was blessed with some clear skies as I was heading over Europe and northern Africa. And as I was flying along, I loved looking out the window and uh, noticing what you can see below. It's amazing from 30,000 feet up in the air how far you can see and how much you can see with just the light of a few lights below. You know, in all the landscape that's below you, probably only about 5% of it has light on it from the lights of a city and stuff. But those few lights in those few cities and in those locations can give you a good picture of what's below you. In fact, I love this picture that's similar to what I saw. This is a picture. Can you tell what country that is? Italy. You can tell very clearly, even from, from outer space. This is what it looked like when I was flying over Italy on my way to Ethiopia this time. I looked down and I could see the outline, the coastline, all the cities that are along the coast. You could tell, even in a dark, dark night, where the dark land just blends into the dark ocean normally, with the lights of those cities, you could tell the complete outline of that country. We can do that as we show Jesus in a dark world. It doesn't take every single person following Jesus, but we who are following Jesus can point the whole world to Jesus. If we who know Him and His love shine brightly where we are with our light, we can show the outline not of Italy, but of the cross of Jesus Christ and what He did for us on that cross and the joy of Easter that is a profound light that shatters the darkness of this world. And we can point people to the hope that Jesus gives. You know, I was flying, not only did I recognize Italy, but I also recognized uh, the island of Cyprus, where Paul was, spent some time in his journeys. It was neat to see that below and realize that there are Christians there today because of the witness Paul gave when he was there, when he was going through the darkness of life, going through a shipwreck and trial, and yet he proclaimed the gospel that's still there today. And then in northern Africa, there are thousands and millions of Christians because of the gospel that was proclaimed there. I could see the flow of the Nile River as I could see the lights that were along the Nile, all around black darkness of the Sahara Desert. But along the Nile, the light, because that's where life is, where the water is. Isn't that telling about Jesus as well, who is the water of life, the light of life? We come to him, we receive his light, and then we shine it into the world. May God fill us with his energy, with his power. You are forgiven. You are blessed, as the Beatitudes say. And now as you're filled with that light, let it shine. Don't be an old, inefficient bulb. Be a bright, shining beacon into the world, showing the love of Jesus for all to see everywhere that we might unite everyone everywhere with Jesus for eternity.